I would like now to hear also the voice of the, um, another stakeholder, the civil society, an NGO, an INGO, uh, that works on family issues. Because you see, when it comes to persons with disabilities, the mother, the father, the child might have a disability. And isn't it wonderful when the family can reunite in environments that are inclusive and accessible so that there they can spend quality time together. So I would like now to ask uh, Alex, uh, Mr. Alex, Alex uh, Vasquez, uh, who is here on, be on behalf of the president, Mario Armella, of the world, uh, or Armella, because actually it's a Spanish, sorry, um, <laughs> the world uh, president of the International Family Federation for Family, to share with us in four minutes some of the activities that uh, you consider can add value to the panel that will be following this opening. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela, and good afternoon. And thank you for inviting us to this event today in this International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Um, our federation, together with the Regional Council of the Benetton Region and the Valuable Initiative and Collaboration of the Division for Inclusive Social Development, started a project called Inclusive Cities for Sustainable Families. The project is directed to local and regional governments that wish to actively contribute to making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, as SDG 11 states. It aims to follow up on the Sustainable Development Goals and the new urban agenda signed in Quito, Ecuador, by gathering good practices from local, regional, and national authorities and family responsive legislation into making cities more re resilient, inclusive, and sustainable for all. Well, in this regard, the local and regional governments that wish to show their commitment with the project sign the Venice Declaration and present a yearly report about the results of their work on points regarding housing, new technologies, <laughs> transportation, education, healthcare, clean air, safety, affordability, families in vulnerable situation, leisure, and tourism. The project has a family perspective because we are well aware that all the members of the family are related to various social realities. So a family perspective will definitely contribute to a holistic approach of any policy intervention and to benefit each and every one of the members of the family as of older persons, parents, youth, indigenous people, and definitely persons with disabilities. Today, in this observance, we turn our attention to persons with disabilities and their families among the different points of action of the Venice Declaration. The first point to consider about the Venice Declaration is how to cities design should keep in mind all family members, especially older persons and persons with disabilities, while facilitating access to housing, involving inclusive urbanization, promoting smart co-housing solutions with common use of services, and ensuring flexible and accessible buildings. Another point of action is the necessity of connecting people through new technologies to ensure social inclusion. For example, the importance to bridge the digital gap through training of professional carers. Also, the provision of inclusive and quality education for all and the promotion of lifelong learning, as SDG4 states too, should lead to the improvement of accessible and affordable participation of persons with disabilities in educational activities. Additionally, the organization of campaigns to promote healthy habits and lifestyles, especially those targeting, targeting the promotion of mental well-being while meeting the challenges of persons with disabilities and their families. Plus, the sign of a plan to make public transportation more rational and accessible while facilitating access to tourism, cultural activities, and leisure for all. And finally, establishing specific programs to recognize the value of unpaid work and care, and addressing the needs of families in vulnerable situations. We are committed to follow up on all the good practices and reviews that this initiative will bring. We are also sure that this universal call for action will promote inclusive cities for sustainable families and will help to leave no one behind, especially persons with disabilities and their families. And before closing, I want to appreciate once again the sponsorship of the Permanent Mission of Ecuador and Malaysia to organize an event during the observance of the World Cities Day last month. During the observance with collaboration of the Division for Inclusive Social Development, 
the first local and regional governments signed the Benes Declaration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really want to thank the honorable panelists because, allow me, you know, I, I'm a person who tends not to follow the protocol, so apologies, but you haven't just delivered statements. You have shared impactful, ongoing activities that are happening. And this is exactly, I think, what persons with disabilities hope to hear from those who govern them. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And applause. <laughs>